Hi everyone, Jonathan Armstrong here with Madangma.com. I'm an environment artist working in the video game industry and I will be presenting a series of free art tutorials online. I hope you enjoy them. Today I'm going to show you how to use Picasso Palette in Maya 2016. This is a responsive material selection and application tool that has been around for a long time and it has always been an essential to any 3D artist pipeline. First of all, you want to go to any kind of search engine on your internet and type download Picasso Palette Maya. And what's going to give you is the link to highend3d.com Picasso Material Palette for Maya 1.1. Usually to be able to access this download button, you're going to have to sign in with a new account that it wants you to create for this website. So instead you can go to bugmenot.com enter highend3d.com and this first entry is usually uh, a working one so the credentials you can just enter and the login and then you'll be able to download it it's going to add just the raw mail file to your downloads folder so you can cut that and then go to your users documents maya 2016 scripts folder and then just paste it there. I already got it, so I don't need to do that. And uh, from there, if you have Maya open already, you want to close and reopen, and you'll be able to access that. Now, what you need to do is type Picasso uppercase P A L E T T E semicolon, and then if you want to add the button to your shelf, just drag over the text and middle mouse drag to the actual shelf that's going to create a new button and then go to your shelf editor icon scroll to the bottom with the new Picasso palette button and then just write uh, an icon label some text to remember it by and save all shelves and that's just going to create a label for it that way you know which one it is if you have like tens of different custom buttons and all the same icon at least you can tell what it is so click on that to be able to open the Picasso toolkit. And first of all, I'm going to show you the normal method of going about selecting and applying materials in Maya. You just want to open your hyper shade, which I just tried opening and that just shows you how buggy it is because it takes a while to lag with the new versions of Maya and right now it's even slowing down my system. I just have to wait for it to load the shader preview or whatever it's trying to do. And if I wanted to select the brick material, then I would uh, go to edit, select materials from objects, and it would select the shader ball. Then if I want to select it in the scene, I would go to select objects with the material by right clicking the shader ball. It's going to select everything in the scene, that material. And there's not really a way to just select it on this single building. So if I wanted to then change the material I would select some regions and then select a new material and then right click and assign material selection okay now I'm going to show you the difference by using Picasso palette and even when you close the hypershade window in my it still takes it a while to load which is kind of annoying <laughs> Okay, I'm going to open Picasso palette. Now if I wanted to just select all the materials in the scene with this brick, uh, first of all you have these blank entries. You can fill those with any material you want by right clicking and selecting extract. And then uh, right clicking extract is going to fill it with the name that you created in the hypershade. So if you want to be able to remember the names, you might want to name all your materials beforehand. Okay, now let's say that I have this window too full and I can't remember the names or maybe there are some odd names because I didn't name my materials and I want to start fresh. Just close and reopen the palette and everything's going to be cleared out. But for this purpose, I just want this normal brick and the red brick. Okay, now I'm going to select all the brown brick in the scene. I'll just right click brick 01 and select. 
So it does the same thing that I did in the hyper shade earlier. And if I just want it on this object, I'll just select one face and then click shade select. Now what this is going to do is expand the selection to all the faces that are touching the original face with that same material. Notice how it didn't touch any of the actual red material. Now this is a really awesome tool because sometimes you want to keep this original without having to affect the whole mesh at once, which usually happens if uh, you're going to select it by shade select. Okay. Well, in the hyper shade, if you do shade select, I might select the whole object. I can't remember exactly, but um, then if I wanted to select just the red parts, I would just click on one of these faces and then do shade select. It's only going to affect the inner contents of what the red area is. And if I select a new one and run shade select, it still works. So keep selecting new faces and keep adding so to selection, which is amazing. You don't have to restart every time and if you have already in your head what you want to select beforehand you can just select a face in each one of these shell areas and then do shade select and it's automatically going to select all of that material so this is really cool because you could just play around making interesting patterns with different materials like a checkerboard for instance And then if I wanted to just clear these out and replace them with a normal brick, brick it's just that fast. <clears throat> now, there's some other functions that this tool can run, like selecting by angle. So if I just want to select this overall face of the building, I would just select one face and then click on angle 60 degrees. That's going to select everything within 60 degrees. So once it hits a 90 degree angle, it's not going to select that side of the building. So this is great for selecting undulating terrain or uh, any kind of curve organic type of surface. It probably will just select the terrain portion and maybe not like a 90 degree curb that you have modeled into the terrain. This axis select I believe is pretty similar to the angle 60. It'll just select uh, a similar pattern to the the angle that you originally select. So let's just do it like this for an example. Okay, angle 60 should only select this. Okay, maybe that's not 60 degrees yet. There we go. Let's try angle 60. Axis select does it. So that'll select just that type of face. region with uh, that axis so it's more accurate but angle 60 I'm guessing uh, it's just not working too good in this situation anyway I'll just demonstrate some other uh, quick workflow of how I would just normally replace materials just to give you an example of how fast the tool is Okay, uh, that's pretty good for now. Anyway, I just want to show you the basics of the Picasso palette and how useful it is in your material workflow without having to use the cumbersome hyper shade that Maya has built in. This is really powerful for environment artists and quickly changing materials or fixing any kind of errors that you might have or um, just creating interesting and more complicated designs. Thanks for watching. If you liked what you saw, make sure to subscribe as I have lots more tutorials in the store for you guys. Also, if you want to know more about getting a job in video games, head over to madogma.com.